Now a surprise. Align the edge of the main bed with the edge of your table and the river just attaches. Since this isn't clamped, I was terrified that it would fall off in my lap and I was ready to balance it, but it really doesn't. It works just fine. This is what connects the river carriage to the main carriage. In most machines, this is called a river arm or something like that. In this case, it's called the river hook in most manuals. There's an opening right there. You are supposed to insert it in the river first, that is, hook into the river, rotating the bump towards you so that it will lock into place. Hear that? Now when you attach them, they're really locked together. If you do it out of order, they align beautifully, but this will slide out. It makes a nasty surprise. These are the strippers. They prevent the working yarn tail from getting caught on these things. Up, slide in under the needle and let it close. Remember there are two stitch dial scales on here. One for the river and that's the one with the symbol you're looking at. Oops, wrong thing and one for main bed use only. So I just decided that I would use about the same stitch size for the river and as I would normally for the main bed and see if that's what they meant. So far it's looking pretty good. Let's cast on in ribbing. First of all you only can use every other needle on the main bed of course and alternate needles will be the ones on the river bed. Since the river is fixed and only has a set number of needles, select those first and then decide which of the knitter needles you want to use. That's pretty obvious. I bring them all the way out for casting on. That's my most successful method. At this point, my strippers are correctly set but I will need to move the left one out of the way for the first row. The main bed carriage is on the left, uncoupled from the river carriage, which is on the right to start out. On both sides of the work, the end needle needs to be a main bed needle. I will confess that I completely misread the instructions to begin with. They have this nice little diagram, and I saw it, but to me, what was said in that paragraph on the right didn't say what I'm looking at in the diagram. I finally saved myself from utter confusion by going back to the diagram. Okay, let's attempt this cast on. First of all, although the manual suggests using the yarn clip on the machine, I have found a trick that works better for me might just be me, but I'm going to use this tool to take the yarn down between the beds. Removing that stripper temporarily. The point of the tool is to add a little bit of weight. There is not much room between these beds. And when I don't add anything, I get a, a yarn stuck between them. I'm making a figure eight now around the main bed needles, a normal e-wrap, a backwards one around the river needles. And all of them are pulled to the all the way up or forward position for now. The manual cautions this must not be too tight, which is true. However, you don't need it overly loose either, I've discovered. Oops, almost did that wrong. E, backwards E, E, backwards E, E, 
backwards E, E, backwards E, E, backwards E, and E. Now we need to make sure all of the latches are open. I just use one of my tools to do that. Actually, if I were to start over here, I could almost just run the tool down it and it's faster. Now it's okay to put this back in. I'd already done it, but I want you to see me doing it. There we go. Now this yarn needs to be held out of the way. It says with your hand, but I just looped it out of the way on the other side of the carriage so I can push the needle retractor button. And run the carriage across. Now lift up the hook. Make sure they really joined. Make sure that you're using the stitch scale designed for the ripper and set it on the appropriate number. I've got my carriage normally threaded from the yarn bowl up. For me, that works. Apparently, it doesn't work for everybody. It's not actually what the manual recommends, but I'm using it because it works for me. And I made sure that I pulled all the slack out of my yarn, reaching into the yarn ball and pulling down because we usually have some slack in it. And now just knit across. The ribber automatically retracts the needles to the correct position. And that's it. We're ready to go. Sometimes you do have to mind that loops don't form on the end. Now I'll go off camera, knit maybe 20 rows so that you can see that edge when it comes off. Let's just say this was a cuff of a sock or a mitten or the bottom of a sweater that I've just made. It would have to be a doll sweater, but this is how I'm accustomed to moving stitches from bed to bed. This is not exactly the right um, double eye transfer tool. This one's a little bit uh, thick. It will work, but I gotta twist it. So that method that I'm accustomed to works fine for this machine too. Let me go into it. I put the tool right over one hook on the ripper. Pull down and it should be easier than it is with the right size tool. So now that stitch is on my tool. I place it on the needle, rotate up, and it falls into place on the main bed needle. Rotate up, find the main bed needle, no problem at all. Changing back to the scale that's just for the main bed and my chosen number. I also nudged the needles so that they were all aligned in the normal knitting position. And now let's see about knitting on. No problem. Whoops. I should have removed my river, shouldn't I? That's an invitation to a yarn loop to leave it there. Or I should just be very careful at the left hand end. But the transition went very well. Please forgive me for this oversight. Changing back to the scale that's just for the main bend and my chosen number. I also nudged the needles so that they were all aligned in the normal knitting position. And now let's see about knitting on. Okay. 
No problem. Whoops. I should have removed my river, shouldn't I? That's an invitation to a yarn loop to leave it there. Or I should just be very careful at the left hand end. But the transition went very well. Please forgive me for this oversight. To uncouple the river, which is what I should have done, it tells you to lift and pull out. But I did find you have to lift it just the right place. It's not like this. It's like that. Pressing up right where my fingers are. And now the river carriage is free. Here's the piece of ribbing we just made. And there's my cast on edge. Now that I know how to do it, it's really no big deal. Made a nice transition to the main knitting as well. There's only one setting on the river that can be changed, and it's this. When it's up, every row knits. When it's down, every other row knits, and the ones that don't knit tuck, meaning they grab loops, but they don't knit them off. And this creates fisherman's rib. There's the same kind of setting on the main carriage. Loops, knits. And of course, it's only other, every other row that will loop, so you do get knitting. It just is a fisherman's rib. So you can decide which side you want that to occur on, whether the knit side or the purl side of the fabric, or I think on both. It was half fisherman's rib, which is different on the two sides. Normal ribbing, full fisherman's rib, which is the same on both sides, and the widest of all the stitches. And then looks like I went back to normal knitting there.